Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. So I've just been thinking about this, you know, this is number 84 of Sounding the Shadows. I know. And before that there were the... Um, no Shore in no Sight. No Shore in Sight. So that's, when did we start that? In Well, I'll tell you, it was uh, it was March or the beginning of April 2020 and now so there were we're 60, in 22. 63 of those and... <laughs> 84 of these. Uh, and putting yeah. into context, yeah. I think we could almost say we're back to no shore in sight in terms of the latest figures of the Probably virus. Right. Oh, I but anyway, yeah. we're still going, yeah. and it is a new year, isn't yeah. it? And I'm alive. Though for those who think that's a bit <laughs> odd, um, I've recently had a serious operation, but I'm back, and I'm alive, and I'm okay. Yeah, we've I'm had okay. some really lovely emails and interesting emails and challenging emails haven't we this last week well people people go on writing to us and i mean that we have a lot of emails to reply to and we will get round to mm. all of them mm. but uh, it is has been difficult one of them is a real new yeary beginning -y one and it's a poem the high days and the hard ones the good times and the bad memories created some happy and some sad the journey that we've taken to get us to this place was hard work, determination and some saving grace. As we step into the future, it's twists and turns unknown. I pray you'll find contentment, love and never feel alone. Hmm. I, I don't know how that made you feel, Adrian. It made me feel just about everything, really. There have been high days and hard days oh, um there's I been think, some uh, strange memories created the words are great it was just a slight nervousness <laughs> that crept into me as i listened to that now have you got that other one there the one about um well yeah i mean there's this uh, this guy mm. who's been in contact with us from ireland and and there are two really interesting areas he's picked up because a few weeks ago we were talking about bono weren't we we were talking about the song, which I think everybody knows. Um, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And we, I, not we touched a chord, but obviously that song has touched a chord uh, with many, many people. And this this uh, chap has emailed us a number of times, says, I remember the fuss around, I still haven't found what I'm looking for in Northern Ireland, where it is among evangelical Christians. But he says, I think it's clear Bono's expressing the idea that he hadn't got it all figured out yet, if anything. And it's a statement of the certainty of the gospel as he contrasts his belief that Christ broke the bonds, loosed the chains, carried the cross, but still hasn't found, etc., etc. Mm. But, of course, people rush in to condemn mm. uh, people who seem to say something that doesn't fit with what they're Because mm. he had thinking. the right, in a way, didn't he, to speak? Because he was right, Bono was right in the middle of the troubles, wasn't he? Yes, he, mean, he was indeed, yeah. It was, he wasn't speaking out of... Uh, 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 in in an outward context he knew all about it and um, I don't know if people remember his song Sunday Bloody Sunday which was also mentioned well I don't think I did email. remember it until I don't being think I reminded did. of it oh, it's very powerful broken bottles under children's feet bodies strewn across the dead end street but I won't heed the battle call it puts my back up puts my back up against the wall the real battle just begin just begun to claim the victory Jesus won that's a very uh, very yeah. strong statement. Yeah, it? and the guy yeah. writing to us said he, he did literally have broken bottles at his feet because he was right in the centre of the troubles. That's Interestingly, right. there was another thing he picked up. We're so grateful for these emails because they trigger off all sorts of thinking in us. And and he was also talking, you know, I, in my very scant scientific evaluation of the way that scientists are looking at Einstein's theory um, but I did say that from what I could gather um, and it was from a program science in 2021 um, they really scientists are having to come to terms with the fact that they haven't found anything to support the theory of gravitational waves mm. leading us to the origins of the universe and and all he did was point out something based on a book that he was reading, which was about the peace, the peace that Jesus promises. And it is the peace that passes all understanding. 
and just reminding us that if we do try and actually understand absolutely everything going on, yeah. which none of us actually can, from the sat nav downwards, upwards, whichever way, yeah. then it's very easy, isn't it, to to block that piece and to get so tied and tangled up with trying to understand things we don't understand. But I think we're, we're so, we so habitually use shortcuts in our understanding that perhaps yeah. we try to understand more yeah. we can. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. true, that's true. So back to us, Adrian, back well, the to... Other thing, uh, other thing that poem made me think about um, was it being New Year. And I think for me, it's not so much wanting to make resolutions, for specific resolutions, but um, to make sure we make wise choices. Um, and uh, there's a couple, couple of pictures I'll share you. One isn't a real picture, but the other is. But the first picture is of a hamper given to me by my beloved daughter. Oh, yes. Um, and uh, in this hamper, and this may not appeal to some of you, but uh, this was her gift to me. It was a hamper filled with things that she knew I loved. So she didn't go and get a hamper of stuff. She got a hamper mm -hmm. and then she put the things in. I don't know what this says about you, Adrian. Well, it's a, it's a bit <laughs> alcohol centred. Um, but I'll tell you, flavoured gin, apple and whiskey cheese, some very indulgent chocolates, which you shared, haven't you? I have. Um, some fig, honey and olive oil crackers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Real ale chutney, which is really great stuff. And a jar of extraordinary French pate, which is just superb. I mean, wonderful, loving choices. And a challenge, because didn't she put a glass slider for you? Oh, a uh, Dobro thing to play on the guitar. I've, I've tried it. It sounds absolutely awful. <laughs> it sounds like that cat we used to have. He used to make a terrible noise at night. <laughs> but, anyway, but it's a challenge so the and second a thoughtful choice. Picture, the second picture is a real picture. And it's on our wall, up in our bedroom. And it's a very difficult to describe this. It sounds very sentimental, but it's a it's a print of an actual picture that um, that has workers on their knees and they are meticulously tending human hearts and the hearts are growing in rows, uh, a bit like a market garden. And there's a, there's a house in the distance, which is obviously the headquarters of the organisation. Mm. And it would be very easy for the whole thing to tip over into sentimentality but it there's something quite, about it does that it? doesn't yeah. know yeah it's very interesting yeah. i think it's just the shape isn't it of the workers and the way they're working this is not easy peasy floaty looking after hearts is it well it's actually a bit like people who love plants looking after plants because they are totally concentrated with bent backs yeah in making sure that all is going well with these hearts mm. and what i thought mm. was that 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 um, is what we always wanted. We've always wanted to be involved somehow in helping human hearts, I, I would say. Um, and we've often laughed, haven't we, about when we first said to God, we'll go anywhere and, and do anything. And <laughs> actually, we didn't mean it any more than most people mean well, it. Well, uh, come on. There were good things about that. I remember when I first met you and I first became a Christian I imagined you and I strolling through wheat fields in the sunshine with Jesus in between us mm. and it all being really easy to make choices and to do exactly what he asked us to do yeah I yeah. mean well, that was a while ago yeah well anyway I mean I think though there, there still was in us a real a real desire to to help um and of course, moving to Scargo House in Yorkshire back in the year, well, it was two, 2010 when we started there. But that, that was the same sort of thing, wasn't it, that we were involved in then, making that choice? Well, it was an adventure as well. Um, yes, it was. Um, it was a choice we'd been waiting to make for a while, hadn't we? Um, I know we've talked about this before, but... We'd, we had felt that this was the time for change, but we'd also realised you have to make space for God to get involved, hadn't we? And so we actually blocked out all of our work for a year to give God a chance to get a word in Edgeways. So I think the choice we made was mm. before the actual move to Scargill. It was a determined 
kind of we did we did thinking. decide to do it but the other thing about that is that we were then quite a bit younger we weren't young but we were young enough for an adventure of that kind i mean selling up moving out moving <laughs> yes, north that's right going to scargill and <coughs> I, I think when you st when you still have the amount of energy we had then you tend to think well it would be exciting and it might not work but if it doesn't mm. it's not the end of the world mm. because we'll do something else mm. and uh, we did go and it was it was it, it was well worth going but it might not have ended like that mm. really i don't know but now this is the thing now in our 70s aren't we and, oh yeah, um, well in our seventies, at least as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and we've had two pretty difficult years, mm -hmm. and um, recent very serious health and mobility mm -hmm. crises, mm -hmm. really. Mm. And I think, and I don't know what you think. I think that the reality of um, something about it being between choice and obedience becomes much much more of a challenge really that's what it does to me well yes i i mean it practically it does because we can't just move somewhere and think well we'll give it a try um the thought of moving becomes much more complex and our needs are greater but i don't know that it's just to do with age you know one of the well actually we had one or two emails didn't we from people who maybe because it's the beginning of a new year Things that they've never managed to resolve in themselves seem to become more pertinent and their choices more important to them and maybe more difficult to and make. Often, uh, they, uh, they do seem to be quite often things that have been there for a long time yeah. and haven't budged. Yeah. Can you read, read one or two well, bits from yes. them? Well, yes. I mean, there was, a, there was somebody who wrote to us and he was saying... Um, He's going to be 52, so not uh, 76 as I've just become. But And he said he's been going to church all his life. He's baptised. He's a believer. And then he found himself really challenged very recently by those words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and drink with them and they with me. Mm. And he said with a shock he realised that, that that still has not really happened, that he's still holding Jesus at arm's length. Mm. And actually, he doesn't really know what you do. And, I mean, that's very honest, mm. very easy to say, oh, well, if you read this book or if yeah, you, if you, if you yeah. think this or if you do that. But it isn't as simple as that, is it? Because our no, choices often are determined by everything that's happened in our lives up to that point. It's a, it's a very significant question and there were, I know there was somebody else who wrote who said she's never quite felt close to God never, never really felt that she's arrived at a place where mm, yeah. she has a degree of mm, certainty yeah. and wants to have some kind of joy and inner well-being mm. and I mean I, w I will reply to that one separately mm. but it just struck me that it's 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 a pretty poignant and puzzling thing yeah. that you can have someone like that and we know that person actually and she's a, yeah. she's a fine person but she is lacking the the sense that God is with her meanwhile in number 243 uh, Winslet Road somewhere someone is saying isn't God wonderful and he's with Absolutely. me all the time and we did have an email from somebody saying that we, you know, we asked about hearts and, and head. Mm. You know, what are the things that have happened over the last year or two that have been significant? And somebody has written. And, I, and again, we've heard from this person before. I trust her truth absolutely. And she says that without God, she couldn't have got through it, that, that she has been closer to him throughout mm. these whole pandemic years than she would have ever imagined possible, really. Yeah. And then somebody else who said their hopes and dreams, which are for their daughter, mm. um, a special daughter who needs a special school and a yeah. special curriculum, and, and, and that's finally, finally coming yeah, to place. Yeah, that was very good news. Yeah, it? really yeah. good news. Yeah. So, of course, it's not as simple as that, but mm. don't you think the time is coming where we can allow ourselves to live with the areas in ourselves that are not resolved? 
Um, I don't know. I, 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 I think to even attempt to jump into those gaps is a real, a real mistake. I, I, over this period... I don't know what you mean. Well, I mean, over this period of two years, I've begun to realise that an awful lot of what is called Christian health is about thanking God for things he hasn't done. Well, now, I think that's what I was saying. I, I, really. are you, well, I, I agree, and I think I think we've got to embrace those yes. problems yeah. and find out what it means. You know, it, uh, why is one? Uh, you just said, you know, background, experience, all of those things. Yeah. You're, you're, what's yeah. happened to you in your life? Um, but it's something I I think about all the time, and um, I want to continue I pursuing know. it. Well, I was interested, I Adrian, just one more mention of an email was somebody yeah. who we've heard again from before who was talking about depression, that awful, annoying thing that dogs you sometimes for the whole of your life. You, you feel you're doing well and then back it comes. Mm. And she was saying that, that she's beginning to realise that if you accept it as being your thorn in the flesh, if you like, yeah. and don't keep trying to stamp it out and become somebody who doesn't have depression, mm. then it's actually quite releasing. Those aren't yeah. her words, but that was sort of what she was saying, that God comes into it with her yeah. and she's not fighting to not be it because mm. that is who she is. Well, to return to an... Uh, um an image that C.S. Lewis used, which we have mentioned, I think, about rowing, where you, you're rowing backwards, you know, that's how you row. And <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that's a long time ago really, we talked about that. Can you remember a bit more very, about that? It's not very, very helpful to look over your shoulder while you're rowing. And Lewis says, concentrate on the steersman, yeah. who is actually in charge of where you're going, and practice rowing and become a good... But then he says... Don't try to make yourself feel anything. Uh -huh. He says it's very bad for us yeah. to force belief or faith that isn't there into ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there must be a lot more to say about that. But uh, Yeah, and, and I know that that will leave one or two people feeling, well, the sort of, so is that it then? Have I got to live yeah. well, it, without? It, yeah, I've, I, I'm going to reply to those people. And yeah, it's okay. I, one or two things I perhaps yeah. will say. Yeah. But going back to us... Um, we have, we may have decisions to make soon, might we? <laughs> that are not easy. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, lots of people get to this stage either because they've got relatives or because they're them. Well, Mobility is a problem. Well, that, and, those, uh, those aren't ours, though. Our, ours, oh, what sort of things did you mean? Well, ours are, I think, and I can't go into detail, but partly about whether we should follow something that seems to be the right place for us to be. Yeah. Or, or whether we should be saying well we actually need this and we it'll be better for us <laughs> yeah. so it, it to put the question but is it you know hamper or hearts i suppose <laughs> I mean, how much here's the question <coughs> how much do we temper our desire to to cultivate hearts which we still have i think yeah. oh, i really do think we are yeah. uh with um what we think we want and need and uh, um as i say we may have to make some some choices mm. and if god, here's a question for you right oh, if no. god said if god phoned you up and said um i'm sending you a hamper mm. um what would be the best gift i could send to you what would you really like <sighs> Um, I mean, you might pack some gin in as well, oh. or, or a bit of cheese. But I would, I would like a nice pack of peace. I think, would you? and I don't yeah. mind that it passes all understanding. I think that would be good. But also, to not be made redundant, yeah. and I think that that's something that many people of our age fear, yeah. and I don't think it comes into God's um, hamper giving at all. No. I think there is always a job to do, and I think we have to find out. Well, there are there 2022. are there are some jobs that you know you're going to have to do, but some people like us are thinking, what do we? How do we measure what we do? How do we measure decisions like this? Mm. And I don't think that is at all easy. I don't want to take down that picture of the people looking after hearts. But I don't want us to deteriorate because we, in some mindless drive to be what we ought to be. Um, and I don't think that's a negative choice. No. Because we've had some wonderful times over the year. We really have. Mm. And I would like us, like you said, I'd like to not be redundant. 
Um, so we'll mm. see. Mm. And uh, I, I think that that particular thing, Adrian, would be echoed by so many people. They still want to be useful, whether whether it's in the particular area that we've talked about, or or just in 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 being part of the fabric of their church, or being yeah. part of of activities connected with it, or being. That, you know to do the very best that you can do to still be giving our hearts if you like yeah. our minds our energy such as it is well good our luck mobility with, such as it isn't good luck with the choices good luck with deciding yeah um, we'd love to hear from you yeah, any choices that you're yeah. either having to make or have made yeah well wonder what the year will bring <laughs> uh, after these two years, I'd say it is impossible to predict. <laughs> I know. Anyway, whatever happens, I think we'll be with you next Friday. <laughs> I hope so. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>